NA Nun's new instance level MCP is truly a game changer and in today's video I am going to be talking about why that is, how easy it is to use, and how to connect it to things like Claude or Lovable. And honestly, since MCP or Model Context Protocol started popping up everywhere, it's been a little bit confusing but also a buzzword so I wanted to start off by just making sure that we are all on the same page about what MCP actually is and then I'll show you how to use it. So this is where MCP really started with NADN, where we had an update where you could just make these native MCP server triggers, meaning we could create our own MCP servers inside of N8N that hooked up to different tools or different workflows that we've actually built. And then from there, we could have an MCP client like Claude or Cursor actually talk to these servers and trigger these workflows or these tools. But now with N8N instance level MCP, it's not just limited to these workflows or these tools that we assign. It's actually letting our MCP clients search through our entire N8N instance and look at the workflows and understand the schemas, what they actually do and actually execute any one of them. Which means right now in your N8N instance, you probably have a ton of workflows that you're like, huh, I would love to just throw this into Lovable or Claude and just have them be able to use them for me whenever we want. And now you can, but what does that really mean? Now the easiest way that I like to think about it is it's just an AI agent. That's not the technical definition, but it's just the way that I like to think about it. So right here, we have an AI agent and I'm assuming we all know what we are looking at here, where the agent has all of these different tools and it basically just understands based on the request coming in, which tool do I need to use? And when I actually call that tool, what do I have to send it? So picture it as if Claude is the agent and it can see all of the different workflows inside of your N8N instance. So it knows what they do, it knows what's to be sending it, and it knows when to call each one. So let's just start plugging in our N8N to different clients. And before we do that, I'm going to be doing this on the cloud. So you're not limited to doing this on the cloud. You can go ahead to the N8N MCP docs if you want to be able to read through a little bit more information, but you do need to be on version 1.2 one points to or higher. And you can see I've got some workflows right here that have this icon, which basically just shows that they are available for MCP. And if you are on the cloud and you need to update your instance, you would just do so by going to your admin panel. So anyways, you're going to go to your settings inside of N8N and right here, you should see MCP access. And right here, what we have is the ability to connect via OAuth or our access token. Just make sure that you actually enable this and you toggle that on. Otherwise, it obviously will not work for you and you'll have a bad time. So right here, you can see that we are given a server URL and we have zero connected OAuth clients. So let's go hook it up. So I'm going to start off with Claude and I'm not on my Claude desktop. I'm actually in the Cloud version of Claude right here, just on the browser, which is super cool that we can just plug it in right away super easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this little search and tools icon that we have right here. You can see we already are connected to NAN, but what we would want to do is we just click on add connectors. Now from here, we can search or just find NAN. It's already at the top for me. So all I have to do is click on this. I'm going to disconnect for the time being just to show you how to actually connect it, obviously. And now you can see all we have to do is paste in the server URL. So I just copied my server URL that I grabbed from inside my N8N instance, inside of my settings, paste it right here. I'm going to click on continue. It might prompt you to log inside of N8N. As you can see, it is doing so right here. And now it's going to take us back inside of Cloud. We can click on the search and tools again. And now you can see N8N is now connected. It is as easy as that. Now, next up, we're just going to test out using Cloud and connecting to any of our N8N and instances, any of our workflows that we actually have connected. So we're going to use the example of creating a LinkedIn post with a custom AI generated image. So instead of having to go through multiple different tools and platforms, you can now just tell Claude to do it for you, assuming that you have an NAN workflow that is available in MCP that actually generates LinkedIn posts and images. And as you can see up at the top, we already have one, OpenAI image generation LinkedIn post. So we have a webhook. And this is just going to take the information that we get from any of the platforms that we're using. So if we're integrating with Claude or if we're integrating with Lovable or Cursor, whatever we say in that platform, it's going to be translated in here and then put it inside of the LinkedIn post agent in which it's able to generate the topic of the post and then also generate the image that we want. Of course, we want it to be relevant to the topic. So it's going to take that input from either one of those platforms, generate our image, 
convert it to binary. Shouldn't be too concerned on this piece right here. And then send the post to email. So there is native nodes to be using LinkedIn and creating a post, but in our example, we do not want to actually create a post on LinkedIn. Now I have had some issues with this in the past, not being able to select the person name or the ID. So maybe it's still not possible to post on LinkedIn from any end, but there is some workarounds I'm sure that you'd be able to find, but I'm just focusing on the example and showing you guys a demo. So we're not too fixed on this. But anyways, let's continue on and let me show you how this actually works. So I'm going to go back to Claude and I am going to type out, use N8N to create a LinkedIn post about the return on investment of AI automation for manufacturing companies and generate a professional image to go along with it. So we're going to send this off. It then should be searching through my N8N workflows. It might ask for permission in just a second, in which case we're going to always allow it because we don't want to, you know, walk away and then come back and it find out that it was asking for permission to be sending something when we were hoping it was able to run the agent without our permission and complete it while we were doing that other task. But in that case, you'll just have to click always allow, which I have already enabled, so it's not going to come up for me in this particular example. Just something that you should be looking out for. But let's break this down. So first off, it is searching for the workflows. After that, it says, perfect. Now that I have all of the workflows, let me get the details of this particular workflow to understand how to use it properly. So it's getting the workflow details. It then comes back to me. It says this workflow takes a topic and creates both a LinkedIn post and a professional image. It uses Tavily for research. It generates the post content, creates an image prompt, and generates the image. Let me now execute it with your manufacturing AI automation return on investment topic. So we're going to go back inside of NADM. Go to our executions, and you can see right now, as of um, whenever this time would be for military time, it is running, and in a minute or so, it should come back with the results. All right, well, that just finished up. So we're first going to go inside of our email to check if this actually created what we were asking for. Let's go to our email, and you can see, here you go, the plugin I use to gather up-to-date information is currently not accessible based on the latest knowledge I have. I've created a detailed LinkedIn post Okay, so it didn't actually do exactly what we were asking for. So we would have to make some tweaks inside of N8N, but it was able to perform the request based on what we asked for inside of Claude. So the biggest thing that you should be taking away from that is that we were able to trigger it from inside of Claude where we found the workflow, grabbed the details of what it was doing, and also executed it. So don't place too much focus on my lack of automation building, but it was able to generate this image, exactly what we were asking for. Let's now go inside of Claude and we can see that it executed the workflow just as we had asked. Now, one note that I would like to make is that in this particular example, I did use a webhook, but that doesn't mean that you would need to use a webhook to actually trigger anything from inside of Claude. So you can be executing it any other set of way without using this as the particular trigger. This was just to get information from Claude into my post. So I wanted to be able to ingest some of the words. So in my case, I wanted to ingest the type of topic. So that was going to be dynamic. Now, next up, I would like to show you how this works in Lovable, where we can actually have it build us a complete front end interface. And by the way, you can use Replit or you can use Gemini to do these front end interfaces. Now, moving on, I would like to show you how this works inside of Lovable, where we can have it build us a complete front end interface. But keep in mind, you do not have to be using Lovable. You can use Replit, you can use Gemini, whatever you want. I don't care. But before we do anything and plug this into Lovable, I just want to to emphasize the differences between MCP server triggers and instance level MCP. So with the old method, you would create these individual MCP server triggers inside of N8N and manually assign which workflows that you want it to be accessible. But with instance level MCP, as long as you have that toggle enabled inside of the workflow settings inside of N8N that I showed off earlier back in this video, any MCP client that is connected can discover and use that workflow. So it's literally like going from having a phone book with maybe 10 numbers to having access to your entire contact list. But all right, enough talking. So let's now get into how we can do this inside of Lovable. So right here, obviously you guys can see we have our N8N workflow. I mean, we can pick from a range of different workflows if we would like, we just have to publish them and actually enable MCP. But we're just gonna be focusing on this image generation LinkedIn post. So I'm going to go inside of Lovable, say build me a modern clean landing page for my N8N LinkedIn post generator workflow. Make it look professional with a simple form where users can enter their post topic, add a section explaining what the tool does, showing a preview area after submission, and make it mobile responsive with a gradient background. I'm going to submit this and see what it does. I'm actually 
going to add a piece on the end saying make sure when somebody clicks generate, it will trigger my N8N MCP. Now, before we do anything, I want to make sure that we're actually connected to N8N. So it's going to be exactly the same process as I showed you with Claude. But before we do that, I just want to make sure that we are connecting N8N in level properly. So how we do that is we go to connectors. You can see I'm already connected, but how you would do this, same exact way as Claude. We're just going to go to our connectors, click on N8N, insert our server URL that you had grabbed from your N8N settings earlier on, paste that in, and then it'll do the same exact thing as Claude where it logs you in. Bada bing, bada boom, we are logged in. Now we have access to N8N. Let's run this off and see what we get. And now it's asking to always allow for Git workflow details. So we're going to allow that as well. So the reason, again, we're doing this is because we don't want to walk away for maybe 10 minutes and find out that it stopped just to ask us this question every single time. We want to make sure that this is going to run all the time autonomously while we are doing whatever other task. Okay, well, now that just finished generating. So as you can see, we have our front end generate professional link and post in seconds. We can even get a little bit more advanced than this and create a sign up, a secure sign up. So being able to charge people to use this platform or anything like that, but we're just going to keep it pretty straightforward for now. We would like to post about using an entity or we could actually just say, um, create a LinkedIn post about the return on investment of AI automation. We're just going to use the same exact example that we used for Claude. So I'm going to click generate post. But now if we go inside of N8N, we go over here, we're going to go to our executions. You can see that it is currently running. We're going to give it a second for this to finish and check what happens, make sure that we get our email. But as you can see, it is working so far so good, but I'll come back to you guys. All right, that just finished up. Let's now go inside our email and make sure we got our post. You can see we have the image, we have the LinkedIn post right here, exactly what we are looking for. So this was able to try trigger N8N from inside of Lovable. So pretty cool, but now I just wanna quickly wrap up here with how to think about when you should be using instance level MCP, because I think a lot of people might just want to use some of this technology for certain things where it doesn't actually really save any time for them. So think about interfaces that you are in a lot. If you're in Claude a lot, then it probably does make sense to integrate some of your N8N workflows in there. That could do things like creating content, doing research, generating documents, whatever it is. Now, something that I think is going to be really cool is being able to generate our instance level MCP to things like voice AI platforms, which I'm going to be creating in another video. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And something that I would challenge you guys to think about is just to keep it really, really simple. Like the example where Claude generated the LinkedIn post with a custom image for us. Now the workflow itself, it's just a few nodes, a webhook, AI agent with Tavily, tool, image prompting, all that stuff. It's not too complicated, but it delivers massive value. So a business owner, they do not care that you have used seven nodes or maybe 17 nodes. They care about the outcome. So in this case, the outcome is a fully researched professional LinkedIn post with a custom image delivered to their inbox in under two minutes. That is what they are paying for, or ideally what they would be paying for or looking for. So the, so the point that I'm trying to make here is that you probably already have lots of workflows that you could go ahead and plug into something like Claude right now and add value. But you could also build some really simple workflows specifically designed for MCP access and just connect them to whatever interfaces that you are spending more time in. So anyways, if you guys want to explore different use cases and talk more about some of this stuff, then you should definitely check out my school community. The link for that is down below in the description. We've got over 16,000 members who are all building with N8N and building businesses with N8N every single day. We also run live Q and A's every week and we've got tons of step-by-step -step build projects in the classroom, but that's going to do it for this video. So if you guys enjoyed, please give it a like. Definitely helps me out a ton. And always appreciate you guys making it to the end of this video. I'll see you in the next one.